What's up guys, Pop Up 101 here. Today I'm going to be showing you the top 10 most overpowered weapons in Blade and Sorcery. So let's get started. And the first one on this list is a personal favorite of mine, the Argon Blade. So basically, it looks like this. So you press the spell button, then it looks like this. But wait, if you press the spell button again, then it looks like this. And if you press it one more time, it reverts back into the sword. Now, this is probably one of my favorites because I absolutely love the way this animation looks. I mean, come on, that's incredible. Pal, I'm trying to record a video. Can you just chill for a sec? I absolutely love the way this guy looks. You can imbue it. The imbue looks absolutely incredible on all parts of it. But something special happens. If you throw it, grab it with telekinesis and you pull the spellbind and the trigger, it shrinks and it actually creates a, I guess, a vortex of lightning, which as you can tell by that guy, it can dismember. But let's be real. It is so incredibly overpowered in this form that I honestly don't, I don't even want to use it. But look at that. How crazy that it just dismembered her from even walking near me. And of course, you guys saw the sword, but the spear form as well, super overpowered. And obviously he tries to come at us. Hey pal, what's going on? To knock him back and right through the gut. Next up on this list, we have a mod that I haven't shown you guys in a while, the Thunder Fury. Basically, you hit enemies with it, they get electrocuted, you know? You can slash with it, pierce with it. It's a very cool sword with lightning. It's got these cool particles in the middle, but there's something unique about it. If you pull the trigger, you can actually shoot out the lightning Kamiyamiha. But this is the very first weapon which has actually allowed somebody to do this. And if you hold the spell button, you can actually create a lightning whip with it and command lightning as if, well, you're Thor. So basically, you can do that and basically cut him to shreds. And let's say you wanted to leave a little trap for him. All you need to do is something like that. And they walk right into it and they get blown into oblivion. Next, we have Dante's sword. So basically, it's this giant long boy right here. We press the spell button, we can dash in whatever direction it's facing, pull the trigger. We can actually shoot out these beams, which cut out enemies. So doing it slow-mo, that is what the beams look like. But if we hold the trigger and the spell button, it can actually open up. And it looks absolutely insane. Oh, come on. You're really gonna, my weapon is as big as you are, lady. Seriously? Yeah. I love the way that it leaves the fire decals. All you need to do is pull the trigger and it comes back to normal. Now, this is extremely cool. And while it's in this form, if you pull the trigger, oh my goodness. While it's in this form, if you pull the trigger, you actually shoot out a flaming projectile, which obviously, as you guys can tell by those two fellows right there, it dismembers enemies. And yeah, it looks like it does have a bit of heat seeking ability. So it automatically targets the nearest enemy. <laughs> It's just incredibly overpowered. Very cool. And I think Genix did a fantastic job. Well, ooh, man, I'm not going to show that on video. But as you guys can tell, it is very overpowered. And I really like using this, especially when I jump, because I can dash and, well, dismember them. And next up on the, well, I'm not going to be showing you a Glock. That doesn't actually count, but it is incredibly overpowered in Blade and Sorcery. And a weapon that I have not actually seen in a video before is the Inner Demon's Blade. So, you guys know from the new Spider-Man game, or I guess it's kind of old at this point. Can stab enemies and electrocute them. I just think this guy looks absolutely beautiful. And of course, if you really want it, you can view the handle right here. You can also view the blade. But for now, I just want to take a nice long look at it as this guy tries to fight us. And we cut him in half because he gets on our nerves. Ooh. Now, one I can't forget that I keep mispronouncing is the Yormonger, if I said that right. Basically, it's uh, a lightsaber whip. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really need to say any more than that. It's incredibly overpowered. It lets you do things like that. You can whip the lightsaber at enemies, deflect their attacks, cut both of their legs off in one try. And if anybody comes at you, well, you can do something like this, swing around and literally cut their body in half. 
And I guess dismember all of them at the exact same time. Now this is a one-handed weapon, but if you really want it, just whip them and ta-da. There really is no weapon more powerful than this one in my opinion, and it's honestly just a ton of fun to use. Now, as you guys know, the Mjolnir is a very powerful weapon, which lets you obviously knock back enemies very, very far. So with our incredible knockback, we have something special with this one. As you guys can tell, you pull the trigger and you can actually shoot out the lightning coming on the helmet. And if you press the spell button, you can shoot out the shards from the Mjolnir. And if you press the spell button again, they will return and reform it. So we have a reforming Mjolnir, which, I mean, come on. There's not many weapons as overpowered as this in any game that I've ever played. But let's be real. That, that's just incredible. So, somebody gets on your nerves. Oh, hey, lady. Can knock her back, electrocute her while she's flying in the air, and, you know, shoot some shards at her buddy right there. Can also throw it and pull the trigger. It does return, and it does have a lightning slam on collision, along with its own heat seeking abilities, which, as you could tell, it even arced. Which, I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. Now, here's a weapon that I have not shown you guys in a long time. We have the Doom Eternal's Crucible. Which, let's face it, it looks absolutely stunning. It can obviously do a lot of damage to enemies and leave some super cool decals. It's a very, very nice weapon, and I love the opening animation too. That's just stunning, right? Oh, and obviously we can pierce and slash very well. Well, along with that one, we have the Doom Eternal Axe right here. So basically, they be coming at us, and come on, lady, see what you got. Oh, we dodge. We can grab her by the head, take a moment to enjoy this, and well. If for those of you that are Naruto fans, we're obviously in the final stadium, but we have the Samehara right here. The evolving Samehara, actually. So if I spawn in a bunch of enemies, just to make our life go a little bit easier, the more enemies we kill with this, the faster it will evolve. And evolution one looks like this. It evolves. We get these nice little spikes coming out, which let us start doing slash damage. Cut off limbs. So, well, like that. Very easily. You can cut them in half. Super cool, super overpowered. You guys kind of get the idea. It is an incredibly overpowered weapon. But this isn't even what I want to show you yet. What I want to show you is this third evolution right here, which actually shows the fully opened Samehara with all the scales and our mouth right there. And let's say this lady happens to be unfortunate enough to fight you. Basically, any way you want to fight her, you can. You can cut her in half if you really want to. But one of the coolest parts about this is no matter which way you're swinging the weapon, it can slash weapon. It can slash enemies. So, ooh, he got his head too. He got his legs like this, from this side, from this side, literally every direction you wanna slash an enemy, do damage, you can cut their limbs off. No, this wouldn't be an overpowered blade sorcery mod if we didn't include the shatter blade, which, let's face it, we can do pierce damage, slash damage, and there's about 15 different abilities we can do which I'm going to show you right now. So if we press the spell button, we can actually elongate our blade right here, which all of these are separate rigid bodies, separate objects that can attack enemies. So if I really wanted, I could just hold the spell button and throw it and literally just whip it around and fight them. Now, a very cool feature is you can actually grab all these pieces and they do all have their own abilities. So like this one right here, you can shoot out these blades and they do damage, so they can pierce, they can slash, they do all eventually come back, but they reform in the blade. Pull the spell button and the trigger, we get a nice little shield right here, which will help us fight against enemies. So we have this lady coming at us right here. Spell button, trigger, we can deflect. Whenever she wants to actually hit us, of course. Come on, lady. There we go. Do some damage. Obviously, we can beat her up now. Now, all of these do have their own abilities, which is really cool. So let's just find the one that we can grab. Like this, we have our gun. Oh no, this one is the fire. 
so we can light enemies on fire with this one. Which is very cool and very overpowered, and I love the fact that it leaves decals everywhere. And of course, we have our gun right here. Now, I'm not going to be going over all of these because that is literally a video in itself, but it is a very, very cool weapon. And last but not least, we have the Yamato. So while holding this sheath, we pull the trigger, we can actually shoot out these little swords that auto-target the nearest enemy. And pierce, they can slash, they are very, very cool. And just to show you guys what they look like, that is our sword right here, which we can actually grab it, and because time is frozen, <laughs> We can actually attack, and instead of it despawning immediately, we can use it, which is very, very cool. So as long as you're holding the sheet, that happens. You grab the Yamato itself. Very, very cool. Nice looking blade. One very cool feature is if you sheath and unsheath real quick while looking at an enemy, you can do that and absolutely dismember every part of their body. Very, very awesome and overpowered. Something cool about it is now while you're holding it, if you pull the trigger and throw it, you can throw, I guess it's like a judgment cut, which allows you to throw a slash and dismember enemies from afar. Oh, right in half too. And overall, it is probably one of my favorite weapons just because of how well it pierces and slashes. So we see this guy is coming at us. Well, it pierces like there's no tomorrow. And I guess it slashed on that attack too, but watch, just watch this. Can easily just stick it right into him, no issues, and of course just, and if we start time again, easily just dismember. One more time, come on pal, let's see what you got. Yeah. You guys want an overpowered weapon? This is the one for you. But I gotta say, guys, that is the last of these 10 most overpowered weapons in Blade and Sorcery history. I guess all of them did happen in Blade and Sorcery U11. Hopefully, they'll be updated for U12, which will probably be coming soon. But that is it. So if you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. That's out the channel. Thanks for watching.